You finally made it. After hours of research and debugging, you finally created your very first AI voice agent. With full excitement, you're running your very first call until you realize that it actually doesn't follow the script and it doesn't do what you want at all. Frustration starts to kick in and things honestly don't get better. After trial and error, you finally see that it actually responds properly to what you try to tell it, but ta-da, another issue appears. Now you're stuck in that vicious cycle of creating new problems while fixing other problems and your agent is just not getting better. So, creating an adequate prompt is actually an art. There are so many nuances to it that even the slightest change makes a massive impact. So how can we make sure that the prompt actually works and that it doesn't have non-stop hallucinations? That's what today's video is about. I will share with you some of my favorite prompt optimization techniques so that you can build assistance with better results. Number one of those optimizations is called Markdown. This is one of my favorites that surprisingly very few people use inside of their prompts. Markdown is a formatting language that allows you to use simply plain text instead of an HTML editor to make things more visual. The funny part is that Markdown is actually designed for humans so that we can read things easier. But since we use it as well to structure data, the LLM has its very own interpretation of it, which of course is kind of similar to what we actually do. So when we look at it visually and we get an understanding that something is bold or something is italic or something is a headline, the LLM is basically using what we use as Markdown, so as the plain text, to get an understanding and assign value to it. So in another way, we can basically use those plain text formatting structures to actually assign value to a a word that the LLM can also interpret. To show you that visually, let's look at an actual example. As you can see here, I'm in a Markdown editor that is completely free. It's called stackedit.io, so you can simply head over to the website and try it out for yourself. It comes with a predefined example. I removed it here so I can actually guide you along and show you the power of it in the first place. So what I did here is I just created a very basic example prompt so that you can get an understanding of it. So most people from what we see is they literally include something like that into their prompt instructions, which also works, but it is not as accurate in case you would use something like Markdown language. So like I mentioned, Markdown basically allows you to format things. And as you can see on the right, this is basically the preview where we can see how that Markdown affects the actual text. And on the left here, for now, we only have plain text. You have some predefined formattings up here that you can basically use to format something. I'm just gonna show you the whole thing manually in the first place because in the end, it is just text that we are using. And the first thing that we want to assign value to is these titles here. So first name and last name should obviously be important as an identification that after that there follows an actual value. So we are just defining that by making it bold and we can make it bold by using two asterisks before and two asterisks after, after the words that we want to make bold, as you can see here. Now you can see that it marks it and this is the preview and you can see that the word is now written in bold as well. So you can do the exact same thing by using the pre-formatting up here. And as you can see, it basically marked both of them uh, thick and bold right now. So now we would also maybe adjust the user details as a title, because now we mentioned something is bold, but we can also use the user title as a title. So an actual kind of separation as a section. And by, we can do that by adding two hashes or specific hashes in the front that would basically intend and deeper. So you can imagine it like sub headlines, as you can see, it makes it smaller and smaller. There's six, just like you have it in HTML. So by just having one, this would be like an H1. So then the biggest headline, second biggest, third, fourth, fifth, and six. So just to give you an understanding. Since we are using user details and it is not the main thing, I'm gonna keep it at two. So I have the proper indentation and can say, okay, this is that. And then when I have three, I will basically add another title in the, sub in the subject subsection which would then look something like this. So I have then the subsection under that, and you can see that the title now is smaller because this one is a big one, right? Or like the, the second biggest title. This is a little introduction to the whole setup and how we could use it inside of the prompt to make the prompt better. So if you now copy this whole part and you paste, basically paste that into your prompt, the AI will have a better understanding of what specific parts inside of your prompt mean and the output is probably going to be better and maybe even a little bit faster than if you would just write it in plain text. And again, that is something I would like to mention because leveraging Markdown inside of your prompts not only makes it understand the things a little bit better and has a better and more accurate outcome, it really also speeds up the token generation because through those value definitions, it usually and most likely takes a little bit less time for the next token to be generated by the LLM. So the return of the whole response and the stream, whatever you're using, is going to be faster. So if you are using it in voice agents, it is probably more likely that you will get a faster response by using proper markdown language. Now, the second tip I want to give you is by breaking your prompt into sections. Now, since you learned about markdown, you can leverage that to even further optimize your prompt. Now, as you've seen in the previous example, we are using markdown to give meaning to specific parts of the text. You also learned that we turned this part into a title by adding two hashes in the front of it. Now, imagine you are looking at a blog post and you are reading it 
and you have a title and under the title you have some text and then you have another title. You know exactly when one section is over and when the next one starts, right? Because you are using titles or you are seeing the titles. So it is fair to assume that when a title appears, we have some more content below that, correct? This is the exact same thing with Markdown because when we have a title, we would basically put some extra content below that. This actually allows us to create blocks of prompts that we can move around inside of your prompt itself. So to give you a better understanding, we are going back to our example right here. And as you can see, we have the user details, which would be one section of the prompt. And above here, we have just the basic instructions. So this would be the main instructions that we have at the beginning of the prompt, which the AI already can use to just give itself meaning, right? Then we have the user details where we would basically define whatever we would have about the user. So all of the user specific things are mentioned inside of the user details section. So if we are now copying this whole part and we will basically create another section, let's say about company details, we would obviously structure that whole thing this way as well. So now we can say the company name, define that bright horizons realty, I'm gonna remove this part. And we could do the same thing with everything else inside of this prompt. We could of course also leverage the subtitles to create blocks inside of specific blocks of the prompt. And we can just go down, you know, until, until we basically reach the, the sixth header to make things smaller. Obviously, I promise you, you barely will need the sixth indentation for the hashes. So like the, the sixth size of the titles, because that is usually very, very nested and it causes more hallucinations by the prompt in some ways. So keeping it as simple as possible is always key for your instructions. Now let's, for example, assume we have another section, something like instructions or guidelines, where we want to basically instruct the prompt in some more ways. So we can create something like that and say instructions. And then under that, we can basically define all of the instructions that we have. We can do that by using dashes to create like a list, as you can see on the left. So we have list one, list two. So these are the list items, right? And we can basically do the same thing with multiple indentations as well, if you want to. And with multiple indentations, I mean, we can basically just intend it, as you can see here, with a tab, and then it basically moves it in a sublist. So this is another possibility. And like I mentioned, since we have it now kind of in blocks available, we can literally just copy this whole part and place that maybe even somewhere else without adjusting much of the prompt, while the prompt meaning is actually still more accurate than if we would not use any kind of markdown. So in that case, by just structuring these things in a more, let's say, object-oriented way, we can literally move things around and we can adjust them while the prompt itself is still mostly understandable by AI and you will get better outcomes instead of when you just do it with text. Now the third tip I have for you is by using prompts to generate other prompts. Since you just learned about the core concept of Markdown and you're already leveraging that, you probably find out that it's very tedious to create all of those things by yourself even in a thing like a Markdown editor there. So why not just use AI to create all of that for us and maybe even use a prompt that we pre-created and validate that with Markdown and other things that we can optimize. Yes, you heard that right, we would basically just use a predefined prompt, we place it into something like ChatGPT, and we ask it a bunch of questions to reformat things, use Markdown, and whatsoever. While that sounds weird, it actually works pretty well, and I'm gonna prove it to you right here, so we can go through it, and you can compare the examples that we created before with the ones that we are going to create now. So all I'm doing is I'm basically just heading into our prompt, and I'm removing all of the formatting that we have done to so far, so that we'll basically just have the AI create the whole formatting for us, and I'm just gonna quickly go through everything here. And there we go. Now we basically have the plain text of the prompt that we created. And now I'm going to show you how we can actually do that using ChatGPT. And I pre-created a very, very small prompt right over here, as you can see it. It is super simple. It basically says, please turn the following prompt into a markdown formatted prompt template that I can copy. And then we have a prompt placeholder here. So I'm just gonna replace that and I paste the prompt that I pre-created right within here. So after clicking enter, you will see that ChatGPT is basically, in my case, of course, giving me two examples now that sometimes happens. But even in both, you can see that it properly formats the thing. In that case, it uses a actual numeric item and that it uses a list item. In my case, I would probably just go with a list item. So let's do that. Once clicking on it, you can see that it basically provides us the whole template in Markdown. So now if you would have an AI assistant, you can literally just copy that, go over to your AI assistant and place it right in there. And to show you that it actually works well, I'm just gonna replace that part and replace it by the prompt that we copied. And as you can see here, it actually did a pretty decent job. The only difference is it didn't mention these titles up here. So I could even say something like, please also take care of the titles. So in that case, I probably can expect something like it takes the user details and it creates proper titles for that. Yep, as you can see, it looks better. So by copying that, I can just head back into Stack Edit, paste it, and as you can see, it adds titles as well. It even adds a main title which is okay. In my case, I'm not needing that one. So this is literally the form it basically provides, which looks very similar to what we had in the beginning. So as you can see, 
ChatGPT is a very big help if it comes to reformatting those prompts using the right prompt language. And definitely make sure to stay until the end of the video as I'm going to share with you a more optimized prompt that does a lot of more optimizations to the ones that you already created before so that you literally just drop them into ChatGPT and you have them completely reformatted and optimized so again that it is easier for the LLM to use it and for you to just have a better outcome. Number four of tips that you can use to make your prompts better is by avoiding negative prompting. I've already done a complete video on that which will be linked up somewhere here where I'm basically going into the details of what negative prompting actually is and how it works. So to just summarize it, I'm going to give you a short explanation of it right here. Imagine your AI assistant sounds weird because it has commas and points in places where it shouldn't be and the, the language just doesn't sound right, it doesn't give you the right outcome, which again just causes to a decrease of usage inside of your voice assistant and, and people start hanging up or maybe not even calling again anymore. So what I see people normally do in that case, they basically write something into the prompt like, do not use too many commas and points. While this works sometimes, it is better to avoid telling the AI what not to do. Instead, say something like, make the conversation more fluent, which then again helps the AI to just make it naturally more fluent and you don't need to worry about too many punctuations or whatsoever in your prompt. By the way, this optimization doesn't only count for voice agent, but it counts for anything, especially with smileys if you recreate text. So my previous video that I created was about smileys, where we basically had smileys inside of the text when people said, make it more conversational, and then they add something at the end like, do not add any smileys, which again brings a higher chance of actually having smileys inside of your prompt, which is what you don't want. So by just rephrasing that and just telling it only return text, you will have a higher outcome and a better outcome of what you actually are looking for. Number five of the optimizations I'm going to give you today is be concise with your prompts. If you are looking for a great outcome, make sure your prompts are not over bloated and hard to read because that can really limit the potential of your AI assistant. This means that you can turn sentences that are too long into shorter sentences that still have the same intention and outcome. Let's go over a basic example together. First First of all, I'm going to copy this upper part of the prompt as this is the one I would like to show you in an example to even further optimize it. So I prepared another prompt example down here, which you will also find inside of my research hub. And it basically just mentions that the AI should adjust the, the prompt that I'm going to paste. It should make it more concise without losing meaning and intention. So once I paste, paste the prompt down here and I press enter, you can see that it basically recreates the prompt and it usually makes that shorter. As you can see here, it says, you release a support assistant from blah, blah, blah. Assist users with proper with property inquiries and utilize available user details during the conversation. So it is a little bit shorter than here. So you can see that it basically just shortens the amount of tokens it uses, which again, just helps you to make the prompt more concise. What you can also do is you can basically just include that it make that to make it more conversational at the same time while being more concise, which again might help to make it a little bit easier to read. We also call that prompt compression and I hope it gives you a little bit of an idea on how you can make the prompt shorter using AI as well. Let's look now at a more advanced example of prompt compression that may not be so easy to read for you, but it is definitely easier to read for the LLM because we literally instruct the LLM to use its very own knowledge to compress things in a way that it is better to understand for itself, which kind of sounds weird and it's going to look weird, but I'm going to walk you through everything. I also want to mention that this prompt works in a lot of cases, but obviously depending on your assistant or what industry it is in or the way it's written or the language, you might have to make some adjustments to get a better outcome. So the least thing I want is you just using that prompt and then just dropping everything in, getting an outcome and literally just pasting that into the AI voice assistant cause it might break or it might not even do the exact same job depending on your use case. So it is very important that you understand the concept so that you can then again adjust it depending on your needs so that it suits your specific assistant. The prompt I'm going to show you now is the result of hours of our work and I'm sharing it with you completely for free directly inside of my resource hub. So you can simply copy it and use it for yourself. You get a better understanding of it and you can just reduce the prompt size immensely for your voice assistant while not really neglecting the fact that it answers in a precise way without too many hallucinations. We are back in my chat and I'm just going to paste this prompt down here and as you can see it is already pretty optimized by itself. You can obviously read through it and just kind of copy it but what it basically does is it uses certain mechanisms to just optimize the prompt so that the AI can basically understand it for itself better using a different kind of language, using emojis, etc. So you can obviously go through it and to actually demonstrate how that works and that it works, what I'm going to do is I head into my VAPI assistant and I'm just copying one of the system prompts that is basically the default that comes from a VAPI voice assistant. If you don't know VAPI, feel free to check out my channel. There are tons of videos about it, but it is basically an infrastructure provider for creating AI voice assistants. But nevertheless, let's just head over here. So we have the prompt to compress the whole prompt in here. I'm just gonna paste this whole prompt and you can see right here as well that this is literally a text prompt that says Lisa is a sophisticated AI training assistant crafted by blah blah blah. The same here we have a little bit of markdown down be below and as well list items etc. So it is a very standard prompt that we as humans would read 
But now if I press enter and we're going to wait until this whole thing generates, you will see that the prompt will be definitely shortened and it will look probably weird to yourself because for us it is harder to read because we interpret things differently while AI is actually understanding those things better. Obviously here it adds the title, which I would probably just remove. So as you can see, it basically reformats the prompt in a way that is better understandable for the AI itself depending on the conditions and constraints we gave it. Obviously, I'm just gonna recreate it to get another example for it. So we can actually see that it always does it in a different way. This AI, we have different smileys and it can see as well that it says AI dev equals season support agent, etc. So it uses different approaches to actually format a prompt and make it shorter so that it is easier to understand for itself and therefore easier to use. I'm going to a website that is called Correct Account Online. And what I'm doing now is I'm basically just pasting this massive prompt directly within here. I'm gonna copy this whole thing, open it in a new tab, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with a prompt that we just created. I'm gonna paste that one here. And you can see that we shaved, for, shaved it off from 2,520 characters to a total of 1,090, and it should have a fairly similar context. So, like I mentioned, it might depend on your specific use case that you wanna use something a little bit different, but 100% make sure to just give it a try, shorten it down below, and then shorten it and then try to see if the voice assistant or wherever you use it still responds in a smart way. Depending on that, you can optimize it if those kind of prompt optimizations and compressing and the reduction of the token usage is important to you. Obviously, this is something I'm usually doing on the last step if we are really breaking down things and we say we have the whole prompt optimized with all the information in it that is important for our assistant to have, then we kind of just minimize it or compress it and then we give this one a try if that is a thing. In a lot of cases, literally by just using Markdown, like what you've learned before, this is already very sufficient and gives you very, very great results. So combining this with compressed prompts only makes sense if you really have tons of calls or tons of chats running and you're really having a high token usage. Then it makes a lot of more sense to use those prompt compressions. Now lastly, like I mentioned, I'm going to share with you another prompt that we use internally for optimizing our prompts for Markdown language. Obviously that is one that can be adjusted in certain circumstances, but that is a very general one that we have that just makes it very easy for us to create things in Markdown that we can literally just copy inside of ChatGPT or any other LLM that we are using. You will find this prompt as well directly inside of our resource hub, but now I'm just gonna demonstrate it to you. So I'm just going to paste it here and all I'm going to to do now is I basically just replace the text with the VAPI instruction. So I just copy those. I'm going to replace the placeholder right here and I press enter. And if everything works, we now should see a properly formatted prompt that uses Markdown in a more simplified way so that you can literally just copy it, paste it, and then compare it if it still matches your standards and all of the instructions you gave it. And then you can start using it and testing it. As you can see here, it properly formats it, it gives it values, and it also creates more lists and even highlighted lists or, or basically bold lists, which is exactly what we want. So this one will probably look a little bit better inside the assistant. And I'm just gonna compare that as well with the other prompt. It even became a little bit longer since we are using more Markdown, but the outcome or the Markdown formatting might be still better. So if I'm going to use that one and I run it again through the whole prompt compression, I probably still get very good results. So that's all for the tips. Definitely keep in mind that what I showed you here are just a very few examples of optimizing your prompts. So I suggest to see your prompt optimization or your prompt engineering as a continuous process because it's really inevitable to just say you created a prompt and that's it that's all you're gonna use you will see that with your chats and with the usage of your assistant you will see that there are many many things that you want to adjust that might not work in a way that you expect them to so by readjusting the prompt afterwards you probably end up getting better results by just making little tweaks to it over and over again that's all i got for you today i really hope you learned something new and if you did please drop it down below in the comments i would be very happy to read through that and if you have any other questions for me you're most welcome to drop them below as well and for now that's all i have for you thanks for watching and see you next time